The following podcast is a next level production. There he is, here he comes. Hello, man in the mirror. I was wondering if you'd pop up again. I know you're scared. A bit, yeah. I know you're confused. You weren't supposed to see any of this. No, well, a bit late for that, isn't it? So, so what, what? Am I like meant to be some sort of mad secret agent or something? Yeah, it's a little more complicated than that. More complicated? What? Am I, am I possessed? Are you like a, 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 a demon? You're or? in danger. And I can save us. Just like I did last night. But I can't have you interfering in what I have left to do. Hey, panelers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. <laughs> and this is going to be a spoiler-full podcast about Moon Knight Season 1, Episode 2, which is kind of funny for the fact that Oscar Isaac in his last interview stated that it was only a one-off show, Steve. So what yeah. are your thoughts about that? I heard I heard Derek uh I think the TV podcast industries mentioned that if it is if it is only a, a you know a limited series that's that's fine. I think well, we'll talk about uh, more of my initial thoughts when we get into the yeah. actual episode. But we got a lot of information in this episode through yes. dialogue and and other characters that we really might not need an actual. I mean, it would be cool if they ever make like a movie version of the origin story. But mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, I'm I'm cool. I'm cool with it if it's a limited series and they're just gonna Same you know there's inserting him into the MCU. That's fine. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's kind of a bummer that that we they're already telling us we're not gonna get a season two. But you know we're getting a season two of What If. We're gonna get a season two of Loki. Mm-hmm. Um, we're getting uh, we're probably gonna get another season of Captain America and the Winter Soldier. Hopefully that might be just limited, but who knows? Because uh, I guess there is a movie. They did announce the the Captain America four movie with Anthony Mackie, so maybe they're going to do that, not do a TV show. But like I said, we know we're going to get Loki. We know we're going to get What If. Mm-hmm. Um, the rest of them, we'll find out if we get Hawkeye. If we get something else, that'd be cool. But uh, I-, I just love that this character has been introduced into the the MC the the Marvel you know universe the, the MU yes. I guess I guess we're just calling it the MU now or the MDU the Marvel Disney universe whatever we want to <laughs> <laughs> whatever we want to use for it but I'm just excited because like I said I like we talked about before we talked about the comic book from the 70s and the 80s I was a huge fan I followed it really uh, fairly closely as a young as a young man and uh, mm-hmm. you know but I I wish I had kept those comics because I I didn't they weren't in the the bunch that I kept uh, so. Yeah. Yeah, I my feeling about that is with that when I got that confirmation that information from that interview, my thought was like, okay, it's a one off for this particular series or whatever on Disney Plus, but that doesn't eliminate him showing up at a later MCU movie, you know. Oh yeah. We could always bring him in throughout the universe itself to help out what version of the Avengers we get or Spider-Man or Perhaps like Fantastic Four or whatever movies that come in the future, or maybe even the uh, the uh, Secret Invasion or things of that nature. Uh, you know, it's just something that Oscar Isaac threw out there. But he is the executive, one of the executive producers of the show, has a way, and he's doing very well as far as portraying the character, conveying what he wants, and the production of what we're getting. And I really appreciate that. And I'm glad that he's on board, and I'm sure there's an open clause for him to come into the MCU or the movies, as it were. So I'm looking forward to that. But with that, we should move right along into this particular episode before we start boring people. (laughs) And uh, so we're discussing Moon Knight, right? Yes, Moon Knight, episode two, Summon the Suit. Uh, our synopsis is, with little time to react, Stephen is thrust into a war of the gods as a mysterious partner arrives. Hmm, dun, dun, interesting. Dun. I'm just curious. Uh, I, I, have, I have a few ideas of who that mysterious partner is, but we will probably get that into our discussion points at mm-hmm. certain points or maybe other thoughts or other notes. Uh, what were your initial thoughts of the actual particular episode? 
I loved it, just like the first episode. I love, I said earlier before we started, or just as we were recording, you know, all the reveals that we get were was was huge in this episode. I did make a mistake last week. I thought it was a car key. We find out this week that it's a storage room key. But, uh, <laughs> you know, but I'm sure we're going to talk more about that that storage room and, and the implications of that. And I, I again, I loved it. I, I loved getting the new, the new character of Layla. I loved getting deeper into... Kind of the uh, the relationships, I guess, that we're seeing between these characters yes. and and the gods, and uh, seeing the reach of Ahmet's followers is uh, is pretty huge. At least, at least in London, London, London. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to London. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I agree with that. Um, my feeling was when I first watched this, it was early in the morning. It was before I had to go to work, obviously. And then I caught up with it and watched it again. And that's when I started to create all my wonderful notes and things that I captured again. Then I watched it again just after that to start to pick apart and pinpoint certain things as we do as podcasters. The funny thing was is that I saw more on the second and third watching than the first and it really f summons back to what you state the mysterious partner arrives. And I'm thinking that's more like Layla. But also, Kanchu could be a mysterious partner because Stephen Grant doesn't know who Kanchu is. And he's dealing with Kanchu for the first time, really, instead of, you know, Kanchu. Well, just yeah. Like yelling it at could, him <laughs> it could be it could be layla it could be it could be the fact that we or got mark. way more of mark yeah we got way more of a collaboration between mark and steven in this in this episode than we've gotten before you know mm -hmm. the last episode we didn't get any interaction really between them until towards the end there in this yep. one so you really that mysterious partner like you said could be a, any of any of those three could be identified or as four. a four arthur harrow <laughs> Yeah, or Arthur <laughs> Harrow. He's kind of he's he's kind of trying to to convince Stephen. It sounds like he's trying to get Stephen over to his side of things, you know. And but he's I'm trying always to questioning. Talk to Mark. Yeah, yeah, I'm always questioning about those particular characters, and mm -hmm. I uh, it, it's a lot of people are saying he's the uh, antagonist, but you never know because there was feelings with me towards the end with the conversation with Kanchu within the, the episode as we get in, involved with it more. It felt like Kanchu was even somewhat of an antagonist himself, the way he was talking to Mark and, mm -hmm. you know, Stephen. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, did, did you have any specific points or any information that you wanted to go over before we go into our, uh, our top five or... Uh, no, points. not really. I just I, I've got my discussion points kind of laid out, and I've got a few notes. Uh, I didn't have a, a bunch, a ton for this episode, so I'm glad you've got uh, you got a lot. But no, no, we can get right. I've got some. There's some things I want us to discuss, though. There are definitely I've got some discussion points that I want us to go through, and Layla is definitely one of those. So. Okay, cool, awesome. <laughs> you don't need to fight me, Stephen. Surrender control. I saw, I saw what you did to those people. Is that what you think? I'm, I am never giving you control again, ever. Do you hear me? I hear you loud and clear, Stephen Grant of the gift shop. You want to start? Sure. My first one is just is the introduction of Mr. Knight. Um, and that is how he's identified in, in the credits. He's in in that list of, you know, they, they list next to I, uh, Oscar Isaac. They're like Stephen Grant, Mark Spector, Moon Knight, Mr. Knight. So in Kirk and Jason in their podcast, they talked about this character and, mm -hmm. and which author it was that created him. And I don't remember. Uh, I think it was in the 90s. They said uh, this this particular run of the epi of the show of the, the show of the comic book uh created <laughs> this character of of mr knight i i loved yeah. that he that his that it's it's mr knight's suit but it's stephen grant's voice that we're yes. hearing and it's stephen's 
point of view that we're getting uh, from it. Um, I just, I laughed every time when he almost <laughs> did a superhero landing. You know, he yes, hits his head, yeah. he hits his head on that bar or whatever, and then lands, and you see he's got the the one the one fist down, the one knee down, and then he just crumples into a ball. <laughs> it was yep, just, he does. It was, it was great. Um, but I love that. You know, I, I can't wait to see this suit uh, fight Come some back. more. Be- because yeah. you know he's he's pulling things from out of his his jacket. He's got these sticks that he pulls out. Uh, there there was some other stuff that he pulled out and then he put back in. So it was just it was really really cool. I, I love the whole interaction with with Layla and with Mark when Mark is like <laughs> you know what are we we were demented Colonel Sanders <laughs> you know and and Stephen <laughs> Stephen is just like well she told me to look for to get a suit you know <laughs> and oh, yeah. so and of just, course he was like what is the suit so yeah. Uh- yeah, yeah. To clarify, who Mister Knight is in the comics is it's basically another personality of Mark Spector, but it's a personality that investigates crime, very much the investigative version of what we know from Batman. So he is like the the true detective, hence the issues or the comparison with Batman during that time. So he's more of a private detective than a vigilante like Moon Knight. But in this case, they give him more of the superhuman, like, strength mm-hmm. using the uh, the the quarter moon, uh, like, if, uh, what are they, weapons that are well, on yeah, his chest? Moon Knight, yeah, Moon Knight had those, but Mr. Oh, Knight, yes. Mr. Knight uh, he oh, had, no, he, he had, like, staffs in the back, yes, He had the staffs right. in the back, he had, and he definitely, one of the things we have, and this is kind of in my notes, or it might be, I can't remember, yeah, it's it was in this, in this note, actually, it kind of confirms for us that when he's in the suit, even in the Mr. Knight suit, he has superpowers because, you know, he, he pulls that bumper off oh, that yeah. car. He's lifting, he's fighting those, it's got those strength. jackal. Yeah. 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 So I, I, I think definitely the suit gives him some superpowers and uh, uh, I'm just, I'm excited to see this character. He's more distinguished, mm-hmm. <laughs> in, in my opinion. And, and I do enjoy the idea. And it, it's kind of a twist of what we got from the comic. And I'm liking that aspect for the fact that he looks a little bit more proper. I wonder if he could actually go into some sort of, uh, you know, proper party and show himself and have a, you know, cup of tea or, you know, have a drink or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> It'd yeah. be funny. All right. Yeah. that, that I love the idea of, uh, you know, Mr. Knight. Mr. Knight. Yep. All right. Uh one for me would be finally getting Stephen Grant knowing of Mark Spector and what he has been doing all along. Now, Mark, now basically, Mark doesn't have to hide it from Stephen, like putting the tape or changing out the fish, wiping down the sand, all that good stuff. He doesn't have to hide that from Stephen at all. So, though Stephen lost his job, which sucks, I think this was something that was needed for the continuity of the show. So, it's going to be kind of a Laurel and Hardy kind of like perspective of these two characters, but in one person, hopefully to, you know, get these two to work together within one body at some point. And I think towards the end of this particular series, I think that's, what's going to happen. They're going to be able to work together. And plus the fact that we now know of all things, the dark creature was an Egyptian jackal. Thank you mm-hmm. for explaining this. It's not werewolf by night. It was an Egyptian jackal. So Stephen actually points that out when they look, when he kind of figures it out himself. So I'm glad we got that point of view across. So that that was my uh, my five. On the, like, very good. Points. Very good. Uh, my next one is is kind of plays right into what my next one is, and that is kind of the Mark and Stephen, and it kind of the questions we get in this episode about which which identity. Is the the and I'm doing air quotes on this the real <laughs> identity you know because uh, <laughs> Layla says that she's Mark's wife that that mm-hmm. obviously that they're married that means when when Stephen says he's been talking to his mother Layla says something like oh you're speaking to her again yeah and so but then also then at the end though Mark mm-hmm. tells Stephen that when when he finishes his business with. With Conchu, Conchu, that he'll be rid of him forever, or that that he says you'll be rid of me, as in you'll be rid of Mark Spector forever. Mm. But yet, when Layla picks him up, she says, "I thought Stephen Grant was just the latest fake identity, 
you were using. So yeah. now I'm questioning what's the real identity. We go back to, you know, who we talked about this last episode. Who is he talking to on the phone when he calls his mom? Is he mm-hmm. talking to Mark's mom or is Stephen Grant the real, you know, was all along maybe Mark Spector is the made up. And we don't know what trauma, because one of the things about uh, disassociated identity disorder is there has to be a like a major trauma that occurs to cause yes. a person to actually create a separate, uh, you know, uh, a separate uh, uh, identity. Entity. Yeah, entity yeah, or identity. Or identity. Yeah. And, and yeah. so we don't know what that trauma was. We don't know when it occurred. So it's I'm, I'm left with more questions about it. But at the same time, it's it's one of those things that I, I just I just don't know where we're at with it, with who's the real – again, you know, will the real – Mark Spector <laughs> slash Stephen Grant stand Step up. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one is the real? You know, the the police the the police say that the Mark Spector passport is a fake, but how do they yeah. know that that's a fake? Just because they're in Stephen Grant's apartment, you know. Yeah. You know, it's just the the, yeah. the whole thing. It's a long mystery that we have to solve as we go along. Mm-hmm. I really think that's what's going to happen. And my initial thoughts from what you were talking about and all the scenes that we got, I surmised with Mark's pretty much conversation with Conchu is just that Mark was at that dig site where they had stated, I think Arthur Harrow or whoever was in the car stated that he had killed all those people at that dig site. And I think it was, Mark was there, but you know, he does have all that training, but he wound up getting killed and then within the process of he was probably dying and made up this particular char- character of Stephen Grant. And obviously Layla already knows of the the actual suit because she was with him when he got the suit. And he it was kind of one of those – it might have been his almost dying, getting the suit – and in his perspective, his mind split because of meeting Kanchu. Yeah. And that's and then he has to dismiss that. I think the mother character is something that he also created in his mind and then created that so that way it's something for Steven to talk to. So that way it kind of rolls around where it's kind of creating your own world. So that way they were able to go back to whether or not we get a voice. It would be funny to hear Oscar Isaac talk with a woman's voice on the phone on the other end as a response in a, in a voicemail or it's like, leave your, leave your voicemail at the beep. Yeah, I mean, all that is speculation that we don't, <laughs> yeah. we'll figure out it know, is. as the, it, hopefully it as the, yeah. the series goes on. So, yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, th- those are my thoughts about that. It, it's, it's a good idea. But, uh, you know, we, like you, I'm on this journey and I'm following it along and I'm nitpicking as we always do as podcasters. Mm -hmm. And I like what they're doing because it keeps me on the edge of my seat of what are we going to learn next? What's going to happen next? So, yeah. Uh, So that was your fourth point, right? Sure. Yeah. My next one. All right. So, I move them around. They're just discussion points to me. I don't. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. My next one would be the conversation with Arthur Harrow and Stephen Grant about uh, what he is basically doing. How Arthur tells him that he was a former avatar of Kanchu and now works for Amit. But there is an underlying movie trope about people that do, you know, they do these particular things for the good of the people. We've seen this before in other shows that we love, like The Walking Dead. Think about it like with Negan or with Pamela Milton in The Walking Dead. Or even within, like, in real life with what we've seen with Hitler because they they had these ideas. Or Napoleon. They have these, like, extraneous things, but cause massacre and destroy people for their own self purpose or their own thought and desire to make the world right. But their, their idea of right is like genocide in certain ways. If you think about it Mm -hmm. and it it really scares me because I think, you know, he might've, he might've just thrown that out that he was an avatar of Kanchu. Or maybe he's just the avatar of Amit and is able to hear and see Kanchu himself because he is touched. Because 
as we saw in the fight scene in the streets with uh, Stephen as as um, Mr. What was it? Both Mr. Knight and Moon Knight. Yeah. Mr. When he's Knight fighting and the Moon jackals. Knight. Yeah. Nobody else. They, they can were see the, the only ones that were able to see mm-hmm. the actual jackal, which makes me think. Uh, even with Stephen or Mark, they're able to see these things because Stephen was able to see that in a museum. I'm thinking the same thing with Arthur Harrow. He's able to see other, av- like these other gods as well as who they are because he's an avatar of another god. So he's touched in some way. Like, uh, I'm, I hate using that word touched, but it's really scary. But, but yeah, I mean, maybe. I, I thought it was, a, that was an interesting conversation, though, because, you know, we had this. I don't know, you know, it's one that you mentioned Hitler and we've, we've talked about, you know, there's been countless time travel movies where there've been like, well, if you could go back in time and if you could kill <laughs> baby Hitler, would you do it? Would you kill Hitler as a child? And in this particular case, Stephen Grant is saying, no, is I'm not a child killer. I'm killer. Not, yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to kill. You're not, you, you're going to kill a child because of what they might do, what they might in do future. in 30, or that in 30, old lady. Yeah. 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 You know? Yeah, exactly. And so it's, it's a, it's, 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 and I think, you know, I, I think you, you've got an interesting take on it. Maybe, uh, I thought from the conversation, it sounded, I, 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 I just take Arthur Harrow at his word that he was a former, uh, avatar of Khonshu. Now he's the avatar of Ahmet. And that's why he knew what he's like, what is he saying to you? And, and he said, is he saying this? And Mark's like, can yeah. you hear him? And he said, no, I can't hear him anymore, but I used to hear him. So, but you might be right. He might be lying. He might actually see the visions of, of, of Khonshu. Uh, uh, who knows? <laughs> yeah. He could, you know, he could be playing that ruse because he did kill that woman in the street or that person mm-hmm. in the street just after he got that information and the scarab from Stephen at that point. Remember? Yeah, yeah. No, he killed the guy. Yeah, he killed the guy that he found the scarab. He killed them. It yeah. wasn't Amit that killed that person. It was Arthur that did that. Well, so. he used that same power that he had on the woman. He used it to kill the guy. He would just yeah, held, he, even, he held his hands and said, but, "I'm sorry that you won't be able to see the future we're going to create." Which was weird because remember he he, to, he told the guy he said, "If you give me the scarab, I can give you food. I can give you clothing." Yeah. And then once he gives, him, he just kills him. So you're yeah. right. He's a liar, and so yep. we can't trust anything he says. Mm-hmm. I don't trust him. Nope. I, I, you know, I could smell a lie like a fart in a car, and I think that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, your next one. Yeah, my next one is a, it's really a short one, um, but it, it it amazed me because I didn't notice it the in the first episode, but they they were very clear on the the face of the statue guy in this in this episode to where it is an actual guy like in the in the first episode he never moved he never did anything we we True. just assumed he was a he was a real person because people yep. were paying him money but in in this episode no we got to we saw his eyes we could see that he's wearing makeup and he even kind of flinches a little bit when when Steven like hugs him you know mm-hmm. we see him kind of kind of move and so yep. i was really kind of i was glad to get that confirmation um but i also wonder uh, what we're, it, of course, now that the 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 series has moved to Egypt, I don't know if we're going to come back to London or not, but we might uh, and see we that might. character yeah. again. But I, I, it's it just really it pleased me to to get to see and know that okay, that's a real that is an actual real person that he's talking to who is doing this <laughs> statue thing. A lot of people online were saying that it was some specific character from the comic. I'm not sure who, but he, I don't he think looks, so. He looks like if you read the comic, I don't know the 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 comic from the 80s. If you the character that Mark would dress up as that was like a homeless guy who would come hmm. into the diner, he and he he'd bring like he'd bring like his old tea bag and he would just order hot water and then he would make he would make tea it, the guy the 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 the, the guy kind of resembles that character so that may be who they're who they're talking about like i said hmm. it was one of his identities that he would he would dress up as to try to get information on the street interesting that's okay. i think that's who they're who they're indicating there yeah it was weird i i saw that and i was like i'm moving along mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, next one up for me would be the introduction of Layla. So mm-hmm. we know that it's Mark's wife now, and she comes and finds him through happenstance while riding her bike in England. So we don't know exactly why she was really riding there. No, no. She said she was tracking. She tracked his phone. Once he okay. turned his phone on, she was able to track his phone's GPS. Yeah, but the reason for that was to serve him papers, apparently for divorce. So yeah, uh, and- that's what I'm saying is that's how she found him. It yeah. wasn't just random that she found him with her motor. She was actually tracking him. 
of all things with a flip phone too yeah uh, which is concerning to me because i don't think they had too much gps in those older phones uh at, she knows of the suit which is pretty interesting i want to see and i wonder if we get at least a flashback of what happened during that massacre so she you know we see it from her point of view uh, so she knows what Moon Knight is and what he can become. We hear Kanchu use her as a way to manipulate Mark because she can be the next Moon Knight to replace Mark. And he kind of uses that. And that's uh, uh, another point of Kanchu manipulating Mark to get what he wants. And he doesn't want her to be hurt. And we see that expressively to Steven when Mark is in the mirror or the glass when he's talking about that and he doesn't want her to be hurt, which is really so nice to see, you mm -hmm. know, it, it shows empathy and warmth and feeling and emotion that we get from that particular character, which we haven't, except for when he was viciously hitting <laughs> the glass and the, when he was getting mad at, at Steven saying he wanted to run away and, you know, cut him out. But, I thought to me, I think it's just Kanchu's way of more manipulating, you know, Mark during this. And mm -hmm. it, he, it sounds to me he's more, you know, Kanchu could be just as manipulative as Amit. So yeah. I'm curious. I, I'm wanting to see those two characters come together or Amit and Kanchu come or collide. It would be great to see that. Uh, yeah, there's got to be some sort of standoff between the gods and the avatars themselves by the end of uh, the final episode. Uh, yeah. Layla was my next one as, as well. And I just, I love the, the actress played it really, really well. Uh, mm -hmm. Her confusion there. I talked a little bit about her confusion with the whole accent thing. And she keeps telling him to drop and he's like, no, this is the way I talk. And she's, I don't know if she's starting to figure out that there's something wrong with Mark or if she's just, just going to put it off. But yeah, I, I really like that the, the actress play. She comes in and like you said, she's got these papers that she says Mark gave her. And I'm sure that the reason I thought I, that he wanted to divorce her was exactly what you're talking about. He doesn't want her to get drawn in to become Moon Knight after he stops working for Khonshu. And so he really cares about her and he's trying to distance himself from her. But then when Steven, and that's another, it just, it, it shows, I think, the level how even if you're in a different personality, you can definitely see that Steven suddenly cares for her because he's like, yeah. he's like, well, th that other guy's a twit. He shouldn't. I would never divorce you, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, and yeah, I'm like he's starting thinking, to fall in love with her himself, too. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, you barely know this woman. You just met her in a few minutes <laughs> for a few minutes. But uh, so it, it's really Steven is really kind of rolling with the the punches there. And yeah. I loved I loved the, the particularly in the apartment the camera work they're doing with the reflections mm -hmm. and stuff. And like you said, he was Mark talking from the fish tank to Steven was, was just great. I, I love all that can kind of camera work that they're doing uh, in this thing. But yeah, Layla is, uh, she's going to be interesting. I, I wonder if she's going to keep tracking him. If, you know, because when he wakes up at the end of the episode in Egypt, What's and I, I really love that because it was something that uh, on TV podcast industries they mentioned that the director who is Egyptian mm -hmm. had talked about wanting to bring in the real what Egypt looks like and he said the yes. pyramid the Giza pyramids are actually right in the middle of uh, Cairo they're in yes, the city of Cairo they're mm -hmm. they're not out in some desert they're they built the city around these pyramids and so that's what he sees when he opens those those drapes up he's looking at seeing the city and sees the the I'm assuming the the Giza pyramids there I've never mm -hmm. seen them myself but yeah uh, it's yeah, beautiful I'm intrigued and I, I can't wait to see get more of this Layla character. Yeah, to uh, to pull from my notes on that about Layla. So, you know, you spoke about her. It's funny, though, within the scenes that she has with Oscar Isaac, uh, she has seems to have an American accent, but there's uh, something underlining it, more of another accent within it when I was listening to her. I, I watched this three times, so my mind is going, and I'm like, that sounds a little off. That sounds a little, it's, it's not true American. What's going on here? Um Especially with the way Oscar Isaac presents himself as an American in comparison mm -hmm. to Stephen Grant. So I, I found it a little bit odd. So I had to go searching 
for the actor. So it's May L. Calame, uh, Calamoy. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's C A L A M A W Y. So she is Bahraini born, Egyptian Palestinian. And her, uh, it says May L. Kalamawi uh, portrays Layla L. Fowley on Moon Knight. She's known for her previous credits on Raimi and Together Together. So that's all I got from her. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but it's interesting. So she does have a slight accent. They're trying to keep it true Egyptian. So I think that's uh, – he probably – for the fact that she is, has Egyptian blood in her and in her heritage, that is probably why she is with Mark Spector, and that's why she, you know, he married her because his love of Egyptian culture. Because they were both saying that they were both pursuing the scarab and everything, which we find out is kind of like a compass to Amit, and uh, I think that's pretty cool. My next one. Yeah, I think we're on your we're, we're to your next one. Okay, so uh, apparently Amer- uh, Mark was taken into Conchu service because he was dead, and I brought that up before. So I think the information uh, the detectives gave Mark was true about the site where people were killed, but I don't think it was Mark that was the killer in that aspect. I think it was somebody else that was sent out there to get that scarab and. It might have been a mercenary for Arthur Harrow himself, or, or maybe somebody else. Right. Okay. So this was this was my next one as well. Was just all the hints that we got of the origin story. And so what the what the police say because I, I watched it three times also. What the yeah. what they say in the police car is they say that Mark was part of a group, yes, of mercenaries that were being sought in connection with the murders of the deaths of these archaeologists. So Correct. I'm thinking that th- like they got there and they were cert- they had been hired. Like you said, I think he's with the group that was hired to, and to go probably. in there and get And he this. probably turned against them. I think that's, I think that's what happened is he turned against them and then they basically left him for dead. And that's yeah. when Konshu, uh, finds him so because again like you said Konshu mentions that he was either dead or very close he, oh, I think this last time I watched it he said you were you were all but a corpse is what Konshu says exactly. when I found you so he yep. was definitely he was either at death's door or he was dead you know he maybe he was mostly dead is that the what's the Princess Bride thing he's, <laughs> yeah he's I'm not, not <laughs> he's not dead he's mostly dead yeah <laughs> um, uh, so yes yeah, so I, I, I love that, that Mark reveals to Stephen that he's Konshu's avatar and all these are things that, that again, that we're getting kind of this origin story of of Moon Knight because Mark Spector, obviously, from that from that bunker, that room, that that storage facility that Stephen finds, obviously, Mark has been doing the mercenary thing for quite a while. Now, maybe he's not like a ruthless murderer mercenary. I mean, like if you ever you, you remember the, those old Tom Berenger movies. Um, Gosh, the name is escaping me now. Uh, uh, not sniper. Uh, the the substitute, where he was like a mercenary oh, yeah. who he he wouldn't do like drug jobs. He would he w- he wanted to work for the government. He didn't want to do anything that was illegal or criminal, but he wanted to use his skills that he learned. And I think that's what Mark is is doing here. Is he's he's like a black ops specialist who has been doing this for a long time. He's got this storage unit with guns and money and uh, you mm-hmm. know a little cot to sleep on in. The the guy at the desk says he recognizes him cuz he, he's there so often. So, uh yeah, I, I just love the little hints we got of where Moon Knight came from and then my, maybe kind of where we're going and and so we may never get that actual story of what happened. I hope we do. I hope we get some sort of, like you said, some sort of flashback of what what happened here. Whether, like, was Layla one of the group also? Because she could handle herself pretty well. She could be a mercenary, too. that is true. You know, uh, was she part of that group or was... I don't know. So well, I, maybe I'm, she I'm, is the master manipulator. Who knows? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm really, I'm really uh, pleased with the the little hints we got because it some of it does go. And again, I, I I know I said we weren't going to reference the comic a lot, but some yeah. of that that origin story does go back to the original. What I remember from the comics of an origin story. So yeah. All right. Um. On to other notes that we haven't sure. really mentioned. Um, sure. I think I'm looking through um, 
The only one I've really got, and you've kind of already talked about it a little bit, though, we got a lot more Khonshu mm-hmm. in this, the voice of Khonshu in this episode, uh, but he's much more menacing Mm-hmm. In this one, then sarcastic and condescending. In the in the last one, he was really just kind of sarcastic and condescending towards yeah. Stephen and yelling at Mark. But in this one, there was definitely some, like you said, some menace to it. Some, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna hurt your family. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna go after Layla if you if you try to yep. quit. Kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, I'll so, have her replace you, and mm-hmm. that's it. And I'll get rid of you. It, it's more menacing than than anything. Yeah, and and. Honestly, too, if you look at Kanchu, who's kind of like out in the backgrounds for the most part when he was following Steven. Mm-hmm. He was just pushing wind and things of that nature. We had him. We got we got to see more of him actually physically how the the skull of the bird like beak mm-hmm. kind that, of floats that above kind floats, of floats above, above the, the body yeah. itself. Yeah. So we got l- more visuals on it. I really appreciated that. Um. Yeah, yeah. I I really like that aspect of Kanchu, but it also opens us more up about Kanchu. Mm-hmm. Mine would be normal people can't see the Egyptian jackal be- since they are not an avatar for a god. So that was mm-hmm. pretty cool because even Layla couldn't see it. All she saw was Mark or Stephen's body rising, getting slammed against cars until she threw a bottle onto it, and. It smashes and she could see parts of it and then it attacked her because, wow, she saw something of it. So I, I thought that was pretty cool. But yeah, how that, would she that know? Kind of camera, again, that kind of camera work I'm always impressed by when I see how actors are able to, to or stunt stuntmen, whoever's doing it, are able to act when there's nothing there. You know, when there's not really, or maybe it's just like a tennis ball or whatever is... is uh, is like mm. hovering in front of them. So I, I love that that fact. I love that we didn't see it on the the, the security camera footage at the beginning yep. of the of the episode. Also, you know, uh, Stevens there, kind of like you're gonna your your mind is gonna melt. Bro, uh, your you're, your mind's gonna <laughs> melt. <laughs> yeah, it's like Area 51 meets MI6 bonkers. You know, oh, yeah. I thought I thought was great. Um, but yeah, and, and and that's how they figure out that he's the one that destroyed the loo. And yep. <laughs> yeah, you're fired. <laughs> so, <laughs> Um, uh, I, I'm trying to see if there's anything else uh, you've already talked about, but I, I don't think I, I don't want to s- go without mentioning how well Oscar Isaac oh, played in this, in yeah. this, particularly just the back and forth between Steven and Mark. And I don't know. I mean, I know there's other movies and shows where people have done dissociative identity disorder stuff, but man, he yeah. just, he played it really, really well. He was able to float between both, especially the menacing look he gave as Mark looking into the security camera, mm-hmm. and Stephen is looking at it with the security guard, too. Yeah. And both of them were kind of coy, and even Stephen was coy, but the way he was dead stern, strong in his facial appearance and who he is, and you could see how Stephen was just like, oh, uh, That's okay. not me. <laughs> yeah, that's not me. Uh, yeah, I, I really appreciated that, too. Uh, next one up for me would be, well, the QR code that we get in this particular episode is on the storage unit for you to see when he goes to there uh, initially. So it's very large. So if you got a smaller TV, you might be able to scan in on it with your phone or something. Um, and if you need to read it, you could easily do that, scan it, go to the link, and it'll take you to issue number 33 of Werewolf by Night from 1972, where Moon Knight fights Werewolf by Night and captures him. And the world finds out who Werewolf by Night is, and Moon Knight has to deal with the outcome of dealing with people and how to handle Werewolf by Night at that point, and about his identity and what they have to do as heroes when it comes to that particular, you know, uh, are they a he- are they a villain? Are they an anti-hero? Or is this somebody who is um, spelled or turned into a werewolf? So it's an interesting read. I, I highly recommend it. And you already mentioned uh, about the one thing that I, I really bothered me throughout the episode was the street performer who was a statue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, I guess we're on to quotes. Um, yeah, I'm uh, trying to think. I've got a couple here that we haven't already uh, mentioned. Uh, I really liked when he was in the Mr. Knight 
uh, <laughs> persona, and he says, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. My name is Stephen with the V. <laughs> I thought that's, that was great with Stephen Grant, because I've said that to people before. I'm Stephen with a V, because I like to make sure they know that I'm not a PH, Stephen. <laughs> in a PH. I'm Stephen in a, with yeah. a V. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mine would be uh, the detective, when he sees him, he goes, what's this? And Stephen goes, a paperweight. And the detective goes, where did you get it? A paperweight shop. <laughs> it's just a cute moment, you know? Um, my, other, my only other one is when Stephen is talking to Arthur, and Arthur says that he used to be the Fist of Vengeance, and Stephen says, I'm not the Fist of anything. That's the little American living inside me. Yep, so, exactly. <laughs> the little American living inside me. <laughs> uh, next one is the conversation between uh, Arthur and Stephen, and Stephen starts off saying, but isn't that a bit dodgy? Like trusting the judgment of a weird crocodile lady? And Arthur goes, you don't need to doubt her judgment. Amit will light the path to good by eradicating the choice of evil, which brings us to the scarab. The scarab functions as a kind of compass, leading us to Amit's tomb. She's out there, longing to be freed, while the cruel masses deserve to face their her judgment. And in the wake of her screams, evil eradicated. And you can see Arthur is very crazy pants in this. And on top of that, the fact that not only has Khonshu been shunned and put aside by the other gods, but so was Amit. So th it's their desire to raise her and get her out of there as well. So Khonshu has a way of being a vessel on Earth and being very more impactful with Mark and Steven, but not as much with only focus with just uh, Arthur himself, but not for a good that I could say, you know? But, yeah, that that was my thought about that particular quote. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's because it, that's another thing that Arthur says when when all the like all the wind is blowing around and stuff. Arthur says, "Oh, that's all he can do without you, without your physical body." Basically, he says, "Don't worry about Conchu. All he can do is kind of throw a, a tantrum. You know, he he works through you, kind of thing." Yeah, that all was right. all I had. Same here. Um, so I guess we should move on to some feedback, right? All right. Um, shall we, we should do audio feedback first because, yes, uh, that, I think that, that it pertains to the first episode of Moon Knight. We're going to listen to Lara's feedback from last episode of Moon Knight, well, the first episode of Moon Knight that came out last week. So hold on to your butts. Hi, Mark and Steve. This is Laura. I'm calling in about the first episode of Moon Knight. Now, I guess you guys didn't bring it up on your show, but doesn't it blow your mind a little bit that you are talking about a character whose name is both Mark and Steve? Well, Steve N, but <laughs> <his name does. laughs> anyhow, I thought it was fun to listen to you guys talk. Mark and Steve talk about Mark and Steve. Anyhow, uh, <laughs> this show was fun. I think probably the best pilot episode of the Disney Marvel shows that they've had so far. It was full of action, even though we didn't get to see a lot of the action. But, yeah, it kind of blew the doors off for a first episode. Um, I liked the Egyptian mythology in it. As you guys know, I'm a, I'm a big mythology nerd, but I actually don't know that much about Egyptian mythology, I know some of the main gods, but it'll be fun to follow this along and, and get to learn a little bit more about this um, particular um, group of gods. But, uh, Mark, you mentioned that uh, maybe Greek gods will come into the Marvel Universe, but I don't know. I think maybe DC has a lock on that with Wonder Woman and Aquaman and Atlantis. Uh, I think the Eternals had a shot at having some Greek gods in there, but instead they went with Sumerian and Aztec, I believe. Uh, on to the story. Um, the part where mm -hmm. Stephen wakes up on the ground under the castle and his jaw is dislocated. Oh my god, that hurts so much. Have you ever yawned so much your jaw kind of dislocates? I felt that. I felt that when I watched him. and That was 
so hard to watch, but so amazing. Oscar Isaacs is so good. He, I love him in general. He is such a charismatic actor, but I loved that he is playing this kind of bumbling, nerdy, awkward, um, British man, and I think maybe some people might have a problem with his accent, but I love it. I love it. They, he's he's so cute. <laughs> it's it's just it's really cool, and I'm interested to see when he brings out the Mark character, who we only got to see for a few seconds at the end. But I have a feeling he's going to be diametrically different than his Stephen character, and it'll be really great to just see one actor play two totally different roles. Uh, my favorite line in the episode was when uh, Stephen was sitting with the um, the street performer who was who was a statue. He's having a chat with him, and he says, "If I'm going to yeah. have a girlfriend at some point, um, obviously I can't have ankle restraints on the bed, can I?" <laughs> sort of the definition <laughs> of a red flag, isn't it? A red flag, oh, yeah. or a good time? Am I right? <laughs> oh, come on, this is a Disney Aww. show, but apparently Disney is for mature audiences now as well. Mm. Great coverage coverage of episode one, and I am off to watch episode two in a bit. Talk to you guys later. Bye. Thank you, Lara, for <laughs> Thank that. Thank you so that much, Lara. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's that. I can't believe we didn't talk about that. But you know, the, he spells his mark differently than you spell Mark. And I don't go by Steven. There's only currently one person in my life who calls me by Steven. And it's just <laughs> really strange whenever he says it. Um, but so the funny thing about that is, is that uh, my mother insisted on my name to be Marcos. And the my father insisted it my name to be with a K. The funny part was, is that you know, all right, I have a middle name of Anthony, so that comes from the Italian side of the family. So my father ruled out, so I got M A R K instead of M A R C. So it doesn't matter in my opinion, but right. <laughs> it's still right. name of Mark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just thought it was funny. I, I agree with her. We didn't even think about that. So okay, so we have another bit of feedback from Laura from for episode two. This yes. is from uh, from Facebook. And uh, this is what she says. She says, great second episode. Marvel certainly has gone no slow built start off at 11 forward full throttle on this series. Moon Knight isn't sitting on big reveals or mysteries for long. In this episode, we meet the mysterious Layla. We get answers about who Arthur Harrow is and what his goals are. We learn why Mark Spector is serving Khonshu. The writers are laying all their cards out on the table early, but I hope they still have some mind benders or WTF reveals to come. And and Oscar Isaac is fantastic. Love to see the transformation of his facial expression, expressions, voice, and posture as he goes from portraying Stephen Grant to Mark Spector. I'm also really enjoying the humor in this series and Isaac's comedic delivery. Completely agree, Lara. We uh, we are loving it as well. I'm I'm loving it. I think Marcus said that as well. Yeah. I I think we definitely have some reveals to come because that yes. ending with him, you know, waking up in some, I'm assuming a hotel room in Egypt and he's drinking whiskey straight out of a, a whiskey bottle. Uh, I think that was Mark that was doing that and starting I it off. I would assume it's Mark, <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm hoping next episode will explain to us uh, maybe how he got there or, or what happened. Cause I, uh, you know, again, we talked about the fact that, that Khonshu is much more menacing and he, you know, he says, where the hell do you think we're going? And then the next thing is we wake up in Egypt. So, yeah, well, you know, what, did Mark do that? Did Moon Knight do that? Or did Steve do that? Who knows? We don't know until that point. So with that, we're going to take a little bit of a break, and we'll be back. Good 
سکوت 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 And we're back. So uh, we got a little bit of comic news for you folks. So first off with comic book news, and since Lara actually sent in not only feedback voicemail as for, uh, what, the first episode, and as well as regular written feedback for the, uh, the second episode, which is amazing, but, you know, in correlation to that, talking about The Crow. Because uh, Lara and I covered The Crow during its anniversary episode last year, I believe. So, uh, Bill Skarsgård, as we all know from the movie It, recently, within recent years, the remake, Bill Skarsgård is going to play Eric Draven. So, I'm really uh, looking forward to that. I, I think he could actually do a good uh, gothic-style character and if it's truer to the comic book than the initial one that we got from brandon lee which i still love i do love that incarnation of the crow and to, to be honest i would only watch that particular version and the uh the sequels in the tv show are interesting to me but i prefer to only watch uh the original one with uh brandon lee so I'm looking forward to Skarsgård to actually to portray the that version of Eric Draven. Yeah, I mean he did great as Randall Flag in The Stand as well. So yeah, so uh, I'm Randall. No, no, you're you're thinking of um, I forget the other Skarsgård. <laughs> There's three oh, Skarsgård. Was it the other one? Was it the other yeah. one who was in? Yeah, who was the, in the one stand? from True Blood. Was oh, you're in right. The you're stand. right. My, yeah. my apologies. You are correct. It was the one from this from, from the, the the other one. So. Yeah, yeah. I keep forgetting the names too, <laughs> so yeah. I made sure that I knew it was Bill um, uh, Alexander. Alex, Alexander, Alexander Skarsgård was the one yeah. in the stand. Okay, Bill was yeah. the one in it. Okay, now yep. I got it. Bill was also in. Uh, Bill Skarsgård was the one in Castle Rock. He yes. played. Uh, yeah, played the the bad guy. One of the bad yeah, guys. Yeah, he was in, in the Castle jail Rock. cell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, next up, well, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness is coming out shortly. Give it another what three weeks. Until we have it, or maybe four weeks. Yeah, May twentieth. I think is it May twentieth. I hope it's before I leave on my cruise because I want to be able to see it before I go. Yeah, same here. I I really want to get to it, and then we could cover it. Mm -hmm. I'm looking so forward to that movie. Um, you know, it, it's all about a countdown. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, other comic news. Uh, I don't know if you listeners are paying attention to what's coming out on HBO Max, but there's a show called DMZ. And it stars Rosario Dawson. And within it, uh, it's basically a DC property turned to a show. And from what I'm told, I have to watch it. And this is coming from the guys from Comic Book Men. <laughs> when I spoke to uh, Mike Zapsik, he said, hey, you need to watch this. So the, uh, the story plot, basically, according to Kevin Smith in the most recent uh, live Kevin Smith show... He states it's similar to Escape from New York, which really grasped my attention because I love Escape from New York. Mm -hmm, me too. So I get, yeah, so I got to check that out. So if you guys are aware of the the comic or trade of DMZ, check it out. Uh, if you're not, check it out and go read the comic. You know that that's the only thing I should you know would really suggest. But that's it for uh, comic talk. Very cool. Yeah. And uh, now we're off to uh, podcast recommendations. So, Steve? Yeah, the only one I've really got is if you're a fan of reality shows, I'm a fan of some reality shows. I like Survivor. I like Big Brother. There is a uh, uh, Rob Sister Nino. He was on one of the early Survivor seasons. He has a whole podcast network called Rob Has a Podcast, and they have a bunch of podcasts uh, uh, podcast about uh, – different reality shows. They also have one called nothing but Netflix that I just listened to uh, that he and, and his uh, friend Chappelle covered the movie, the bubble, which they didn't like. I, I was entertained by the bubble. It wasn't great. Uh, I wouldn't put it up there in crazy good cinematic uh, stuff, but the bubble on Netflix, it was I right to watch. 
<laughs> so Rob has a podcast. <laughs> you can check out his website. Rob has a website. That's where you can find all the podcasts that are there. So, like I said, especially if you like any, almost any reality show you can think of, reality shows that I've never even heard of, they they cover on different podcasts. So check out Rob has a podcast. Rob has a podcast or Rob has a website dot com. Awesome. Um, one for me would be Truest Blood. It's still going. I don't know if you guys are keeping up, but I am keeping up because I love listening listening to uh, Deborah. What is Deborah Ann Wall? Okay, and, I never watched and, True Blood, so <laughs> uh, Deborah Ann Wall was actually in Punisher, dude. Yeah, she was. Uh, oh, I forget her name. She was the secretary that Matt actually takes in. Oh, okay, I'm forgetting. But uh, she was in there, and uh, Kristen Bauer. And uh, they played prominent cast members within the show for its run, and they're doing episode by episode, and I really enjoy it because it makes me want to watch True Blood again. You know, it's been so long. So that that's about it for podcast recommendations for me. Uh, YouTube recommendations? Well, obviously, you know, do you have one? I had the only one I've got, and I didn't get a chance to watch it, but I'm 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 gonna watch it as soon as I can. Is Honest Trailers dropped a Honest Trailer for Spider Man No Way Home, so ah. I'm uh, I'm excited to, to watch that. I think that dropped this week. I just didn't get a chance to to check it out. So uh, Honest Trailers is is a, a funny, hilarious YouTube uh, channel. Yeah, awesome. And for me, well, obviously, you know. Rob from Comics Explained. So, obviously, if you guys have questions about Moon Knight, as we're covering, check out Comics Explained. He will cover everything Moon Knight, because he loves to talk about comics. And especially that it's adapted to, which kind of correlates to what we do here in podcasting. But he gives the the nitty-gritty of what happens within Moon Knight in the comics, in comparison to the actual show. So if you want to go deep dives, go there. So comics explained with Rob. Obviously you are listening to us on your podcast player of choice, which is either Spotify, Google play, Apple podcasts, or like I said, any of them out there that, uh, that uh, you choose to listen to us. We're on all the available platforms. If there's an opportunity to give us a rating, we would love for you to give us a five star rating and we would definitely give you a shout out on any of those platforms. Yep. Well, you could check out our, our actual website, which would be panels to pixels.com. And there you could actually find links and it'll probably redirect us, to, you know, redirect you to the actual Facebook page where you could actually find www.facebook.com slash panels to pixels. We are also on Twitter at panels to pixels. That's at panels, the number two and the word pixels. And you can email us just like, uh, a bunch of other people have done in the past. So you could email us panels two pixels one at gmail.com. Panels two is spelled out T O pixels and the number one at gmail.com. You could send a regular text, or if you want, you could actually record your voice and then send that up to us just like Lara had done. And then we will play it and pop it right into the podcast and listen to it and comment and laugh like we just did, which was amazing and fun. Very, very cool. We are on YouTube under Panels 2 Pixels Podcast, so check out us there. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe. Again, that's Panels 2 Pixels Podcast on YouTube. Awesome. And we are on Instagram at Panels 2 Pixels Podcast. Spelled out completely. You can check out all the other podcasts that are available on the Next Level Podcast Network. We highly recommend them from Wilhelm, The Melting Pat, Podcast Zero, and so many more. You can find those at nextlevelradioonline.com. All right. So coming up next week, the next episode of Moon Knight entitled We Have No Clue. So <laughs> What? That's the title? We Have No Clue? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that's the, that's the title. We have no clue. That that was Stephen Krant. So he'll say we have no clue. All right, I like it. Not not uh, not to put a you know bad British accent on, but you know I'm sure our friends out you know out in England or Ireland will be like, oh great, you guys suck. <laughs> All right. So where else can listeners hear us? Well, me, you can. Obviously, right here on Panels 2 Pixels, but uh, I send voicemails to various other podcasts that our friends do. I've been a little lapsed on it because everybody else is covering Moon Knight, and I don't want to <laughs> give away my Moon Knight <laughs> secrets to them. But I do send voicemails to Walking Dead cast and uh, for Yellow Jackets podcast. 
Uh, and yeah, you actually should listen to Yellow Jackets listeners too. So if you're not into the Yellow Jackets crew, do it. All right. So with me, you could actually find me on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast on the Pirate Core Entertainment Network. And with that, you know, we cover action, adventure, thriller, suspense films, everything that gets your adrenaline going. So uh, the last episode I left you off with was literally Airplane. This week, you're going to get Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. But following that, you will be getting Army of Darkness, Sam Raimi's Army of Darkness with Bruce Campbell. So we're going to be covering that. So that will be a joint effort between Watched It in the 80s, Mr. Damien himself, and our friend Jamie, who loved this particular film. So check that out when it comes out. And the link is on the Adrenaline Cinema Podcast Facebook page for you to comment on, or you could easily go straight to your email and type us out your thoughts and what you thought of the movie Army of Darkness at Adrenaline Cinema Podcast at gmail.com. Do so if you are following. It'd be amazing. Thank you. Was that too much? That was just perfect, dude. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Good. I, I thought I was emphasizing too much. All right. No, so, you're good. You're good. All right. Yeah, well, we're pretty good. Uh, so that's pretty much our show. I am Mark. <laughs> I'm Steve. <laughs> and this was Panels to Pixels. And we love to have a good time. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. <laughs> good night. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I just like having fun. <laughs> yeah.